Uh, thanks to everyone for coming back. Um, let's see, <laughs> a lot of people here have made it through uh, some storms and other uh, trials and tribulations of getting here. Uh, so I think we've got a really uh, jam-packed day this today, which, which I think is going to be really exciting. Um, and I'm just going to take a few minutes to make sure that we can try to stay on schedule for the day today. Um, to recap a little bit of sort of the grand design of this, um, yesterday, uh, you know, I, I, I see yesterday as being more of a presentation on the enabling technologies, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, and, and I think those were really crucial in terms of dealing with issues like the modeling, um, the working groups, regulatory initiatives, which, are, you know, I think are really um, going to pay uh, a lot of dividends, so to speak, in terms of the progress that you heard on the regulatory initiatives, the community engagement issues, and, and the progress that's been made there. But for, for those of you who are old enough to remember and, and maybe, you know, wasted as much time as I did on TV back then, you know, the commercial um, with, uh, you know, where's the beef, B-E-E-F. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's what uh, a lot of today is about, I is really to answer the question of, okay, now we get to where's the beef. Um, and to start off the morning today, and uh, you probably ha you have a lot more detail in your booklets, um, we're going to start off with both the clinical pipeline and then the discovery pipeline. Uh, and really um, look at in as much depth as we can over the context of, um, you know, a short period of time of where do we stand. And I think as usual for TB, um, at least these years, the glass is um, half full or half empty. Um, the pipeline uh, certainly uh, is growing and is more robust than it's been in the past. Uh, and uh, you know, I think you'll see that uh, for those of you who are not intimately involved in, in the development or the discovery processes. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, and I, I think it stands in sort of a little stark contradistinction to what we heard yesterday morning from uh, uh, the HCV field uh, for, you know, that, that we're not quite at that level of either enabling technologies or pipeline, but I think that really is the... Uh, the goal of where we need to get to and, and we want to get to. Uh, I, I would want to point out that, um, and, and maybe uh, surprise a little bit for, for Deborah and Jan, we, we made a mistake in the first session, I think, um, and that if you look in your books, we, we've called it the brief industry uh, or brief industry updates. Um, which I think we probably, you know, the, the typical transcribing old stuff into, uh, you know, the, wh what you're doing today, and it doesn't always follow through. Uh, and, you know, when you look at it, and I looked at it this morning, uh, you know, with a little bit of a queer mind, and said, you know, we've got four of ten uh, presenters who are not industry. Um, so this is no longer um, an industry update. Uh, this is really a pipeline update. And one of the factors that I think we have to take into consideration is that we are seeing a shift, fortunately or unfortunately, um, that includes um, quite a few non-industry players. So while on the one hand, um, I, I really want to thank the stalwarts um, who are here, um, you know, almost from the beginning, uh, Janssen, Atsuka, uh, Sequela, GSK, um, it's after, uh, you know, the, indus the, the real industry players um, who have been with this battle uh, from the beginning, certainly, of CPTR. Um, I certainly also want to, and also lament the fact that we've had four major players who have dropped out um, uh, on the industry side, which I think all of you are aware of, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, uh, Vertex, and Novartis. Novartis, fortunately, is getting back in with clofazamine. Um, but we are seeing, I think, a shift uh, in that, and, and that's something that we do need to really take cognizance of and, uh, you know, uh, see what effect that's going to have down the road. Now, as you'll hear from Nader um, on the preclinical or the discovery pipeline, and, and thanks uh, to a tremendous extent to the Gates Foundation with the TB Drug Accelerator Program, um, I think we are drawing um, industry back in, at least on the discovery level, uh, to a great extent. Uh, and I think one of the challenges there is going to be to continue that involvement as those projects reach fruition 
and um, get into, uh, frankly, the more expensive and more complicated stages post um, initial discovery work. And then just finally, I think uh, after um, the lunch break, um, I think then we'll sort of go back to the, what, again, what I'll call the enabling technologies or really enabling tools, um, and then uh, have a chance to uh, understand better uh, both the, uh, uh, the drug repository, uh, the sample reposit biorepository that's being built and that now is available for usage, and the sequencing uh, repository that's uh, going to be made available. Uh, and again, those will be tremendous tools going back to, I think, the initial point that if we are going to get to the point that we have a, you know, similar to HCV, a 48-hour um, simple test that really has a 90 percent predictiveness for telling us whether phase three is going to work, uh, you know, we're going to need those sort of tools. And it's really going to be important uh, that those are available, uh, they're used, and we can, in fact, uh, move forward with those. So with that, um, let me introduce Carl Mendel from the TB Alliance, um, and he's going to lead the first session uh, in terms of the clinical pipeline, uh, and uh, we'll hear, I think, some tremendous progress over the last 18 months.